Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++ lesson 1.7. Today we are going to talk about string member functions. Now, in the former lesson, I taught you how to use strings and how to store values in them and how to retrieve the values back out of them. But, you may not realize it, but strings are a lot more useful than you realize because they belong to what's called a class. Now, don't even worry about what a class is right now. But just know, to, just, just know that there are a bunch of things called member functions that belong to that string class that you can use on every string. Now a member function, as you see in the vocabulary, is a function that is built into a data type that can be used on every variable of that type. The functions are accessed by using a dot. And that dot is called the member access operator, as you see in the second one. It's, uh, it's just, eh, I'll show you in a minute. And then an algorithm is a set of basic instructions that are followed step by step to reach a specific end goal. Every, not every, but most member functions can be classified as an algorithm in and of itself. Um, you'll get to understanding that a little later. All right. But there are lots of member functions for strings. And I don't have time to teach them all. So I'm only going to teach four of them today real quick. Just the four I feel are most important, just in my opinion, um, that I use the most in my everyday programming. Um, but it will fall upon you to learn uh, the main uses for these and how to use them because there are countless uses. Um, I'm just going to give you a few examples because I can't teach you everything. <laughs> That's impossible. All right. So... Before we get into this, let's look at the basic uh, construction of a string. I have a little depiction right here. See, we have a string name equals Tyler, and we stored my name inside there. And I have this chart here that tells you the position number and then the value stored at that position in the string. So we have at position 0 is a capital T, position 1 is a Y, at 2 is L, 3, E, 4, and R. There's five letters, but it starts at zero and goes up to four, accounting for five values, zero, one, two, three, four. Um, but that is the basic construction of a string, and that's the main thing that you need to know about uh, these, uh, about how to use these member functions. Now, the first member function I'm going to teach you is the at member function. So just take a look at this simple program here. We've defined it to be... Uh, to have strings and standard namespace and everything and we set we set up a string and we stored a value in it with a little phrase my name is Tyler spaces and all and we created an integer called index and set it initially equal to zero so then we're asking the user enter a whole number and we take some input from them using cn and store it in index as a number so they're entering a whole number just one number so then in this CL statement down here, we are displaying the character in that string at that position of the index number they put in. So you can see the character at position index, the index number that they put in, we're outputting the variable uh, value, is, and then we're giving the value at that position. So you can see we have str, the name of our variable, dot at parentheses index parentheses. So the way this works, uh, the way that a, a member function works is we have the name of the variable. I'm going to type this out for you. Um, let me put it here. So we have name of variable, and we have a dot name of member function. And then we have the parentheses for the function because it's a function. Remember when I talked about the main function? It's a function because it has the parentheses, and this uh, these parentheses allows us to input parameters into the function. So then, with this specific function, you can see we're going to have one uh, parameter, and that parameter that we're putting in is the index that we want to get the value at. So we tell the uh, the function that we want to access the variable. At or sorry, access the value at position index. So we're putting in the number into the parameter, and it's going to spit out whatever value is stored there. So let's see this in action real quick. I'm going to run this. All 
Okay, so you can see, enter a whole number. Uh, let's put in 4. So I put in 4 and it says the character at position 4 is lowercase a. So if we go in our string here, my name is Tyler, we start at m, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can indeed see that at position 4 we have a lowercase a. So let's do this one more time just to cure the concrete, so as to speak. 7. The character at position 7 is is what? Well, that's a space. So if we start here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you can see 7 is the, is the space in between E and I. So spaces work just as characters because that's what they are, they're characters. All right, so that's the at number function. It's, uh, it's used to grab a value at a position index in the string. Um, another one that I'm going to show you is, let me just comment this out. All right, so we have C out, less than, less than, the length of the string is str.length. So three guesses as to what this member function is used for. That's right. It displays the length of the string. So if, if we look at how long the string is, you can count out the variables. Uh, I mean, sorry, the characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's what I count unless I messed up. Um, but, so, here we go. All right, so we have the string, and we're going to display the length of it. So when we run this, the length of the string is 16, just as I counted out uh, with my cursor. So we can see that it displays the length. Now let's see what happens if we take off Tyler. Length of the string is 11. So we took off five characters from my name. 16 minus 5 is 11. So you can see that it does that indeed. Now let's add it back, but let's put a bunch of spaces after it. Because a lot of people think that it chops off spaces, or trailing spaces, kind of like significant figures. The length of the string is 30. No. So you can absolutely see that it doesn't trim off spaces. It keeps the spaces because that's part of the length. All right. So that's the length uh, member function. Now I'm going to. Uh, okay. I'll just do this. All right. So you can see what I did here. I typed in a bunch of random stuff into my string and then I put my name in the middle Tyler and then I put in a bunch more random stuff now what I'm gonna show you now is the find algorithm so the find algorithm is useful when you need to find a string within another string or a character within a string you just you type in what you wanna find and it'll find it in there and it'll give you the position so it's kinda of like the opposite of the at in, in the at, you typed in the position, and it gave you the value. Well, now you're typing in the value, and it's going to give you the position. So what we do is we're going to display what's what position my name is located at. So Tyler is located at position str dot, the member access operator, find is the member, parentheses, and then the parameter is going to be a string called Tyler. So we're using the, the quotation marks here to denote a string. So we're putting a string in the parameter and we're going to find Tyler. So when we run this, Tyler is located at position 30. Um, I really don't want to count that out, so just trust me that it, it tells you the right thing. <laughs> um, but if you started here at the beginning with the S of this string, you counted all the way out to the first character of my name, Tyler, then you would count all the way to 30. If you started at 0, because remember positions are starting at 0 and going up, not starting at 1. The length starts at 1, because that's a completely different measure. All right. Now, do note that the, that the find gives you the position of the first character of the string. Not, not the second, not the last. It gives you the first. So if I were 
to instead look for Euler. You can see the position is located at 31 because now it found the y one position past the t. So now it had to add one to the position because it's looking for Euler, not Tyler. So now the last uh, algorithm I'm going to teach you is called the substring. Now this one is pretty freaking awesome. I love this one. It's so useful. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the position in there of my name. So, so we're going to look inside that string and find Tyler with the find algorithm and then we're going to come down below it and we're going to create another string and store that name inside of that variable. So watch this. If we create a variable int index equals str.find and we're going to find Tyler and store the position then we are going to say Tyler is located at position index instead, end of the line, and then we're going to say name, which let me create another string, name equals str dot substring. Now it doesn't, it's not spelled out, it's s u b s t r, substr. And we're going to give it two parameters. We're going to give it the position to start at index, because that's the position in the string where my name is. So it's going to start at index, and it's going to start grabbing right there at position 30, if I remember correctly. And the second parameter is going to be how many characters to grab. So my name, Tyler, is five characters long. So we're going to grab five characters starting at the index. And then we're going to display your name Ugh, is Tyler or name output the variable all right so let's run this and see what happens Tyler is located at position 30 we've already verified that your name is Tyler so you can see I didn't cheat or anything and give name an initial value of Tyler you can see name is completely empty at the beginning so then you just know that it went through and grabbed everything correctly because by the end we have the correct value uh, that we wanted. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick is if I take off this second parameter with substring, watch what happens. Your name is Tyler Ninesol. So you can see if you look at the string up here, you'll see. Tyler Nineville. So if we take off the second parameter and we just give it a starting position, it's going to start at that starting position and grab everything indefinitely until it reaches the end of the string. So if the, the, if this was even longer, then it'd be even longer. If it was shorter, it'd be shorter. Um, but typically, uh, you don't want to do that just because there's not that many uses. But there are quite a few good uses for that. But typically, if you know how, how far you want to grab, just go ahead and give it uh, the numbers. That way it can just grab it and stop and go, rather than having to check for more and more and more and more. Alright, so that is the last function I wanted to teach you um, today, but there is one little trick I want to show you with at. Actually, never mind. I'm going to let you figure that out. <laughs> So um, some things that, that would help you uh, to get better at this is grab your name from, from uh, a string using a substring algorithm. So just, just try this out without looking at my video or anything and try, and try and recreate everything that I just did here and see if you can do it from memory. If not, then reference it back and then put the video away and then try and do it again because practice makes perfect. Uh, excuse me. Perfect practice makes perfect. Don't ever mistake that. Um, Something else is discover new ways to use the substring algorithm. There are lots of ways, and there are many different ways to use the parameters, too. So just Google around and, and find out what the other parameters are and how to use them and everything. Um, find out what happens if there's multiple copies of what you're trying to find in a string. So if, if you're using the find algorithm, what happens if my name Tyler was listed twice in that string? Try that out. Now, also, one last thing. 
figure out if there are any alternatives to using the at uh, function. So at gives you the position in the string. Figure out if there's another way of doing that. See, see if there's a, a better, easier way, instead of listing out a whole function, to just return a single character at a specific position. I will tell you that there is. It's up to you to figure out how. That's all for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.